first first five years we played only seven shows um because each time we would perform the audience will will go back and they'll come and thank us and they go uh, they went and talked about about it to whole lot of people their friends and their friends friends relatives and so on. so we started getting inquiries we started getting inquiries we did not have an album with us at that point of time okay uh, we heard that your show was good but tell us what kind of music you play then we'll probably call you but there was no way to reach out to them there was no real way now in today's day it is so simple just to record it in a very simple fashion uh, also and upload it on the net and tell people like this sound is there so uh, reaching out to more number of people has become much much easier for a complete fresher otherwise you would have had to wait for some music company who will suddenly become very very uh, uh, what uh, have uh, the sympathy on you and uh, you know give you the money to uh, this thing and then uh, not give you royalties and then a whole lot of other things so um, uh, at least people are getting to know the 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 outreach is far far more because you know it has been not that much of an issue with us as it has been for probably the music companies um we earn much more of our revenue and there's no comparison uh from our live shows than our royalties right but if uh, um and also we know that if a person is getting a copy from somebody else the person probably does not have the money to buy it if he does not at least it is reaching out it is reaching the uh, audience i mean that is something which and um uh, first time when we got to know it our albums have been pirated all over the place that in kathmandu uh, pirated uh, there's a train kandhi sa chini everything is selling there <laughs> uh, it feels good because you know that you are probably in that league that people are pirating your um, music you know pirate the connotation of piracy has changed over the years when i was uh, working with uh, emi the gramophone company of india uh way back in the early 90s um piracy meant only counterfeits right du- counterfeits mean duplicate cassettes or cds whatever um today uh, piracy has come in, in a whole lot of different ways because of, because of the internet now um uh, uh, and through the internet nobody is making that money at that point of time the pirates used to but i i can't possibly say that nobody is making that money because if you have a particular website where you can free download stuff i'm sure there are whole lot there are so many hits that uh, people people would like to go and advertise there so they get the revenues from different channels so uh, um it's it's very difficult to say what is commercial and what is not yeah. see if you go and uh, look into uh, a computer software which allows you to make music you know um it's very weird um i firstly the first thing that came in was sequencing you had uh, uh different sound modules and you get lot you know banks of different kinds of sounds and you could trigger any sound by pressing the keys of the keyboard <coughs> and then it has now turned into there are there are electronic flutes which you can actually connect to that there are electronic uh, there, there there are midi guitars okay through midi you uh, uh the softwares actually they there were various different ways of making music a you you uh, initially loops were not there you would have to actually create a loop of your own and then create the music but the computer used to help you suppose you play something and you are you've gone out of tune or you've gone out of uh, rhythm especially you ask the computer to correct it it will correct it and it just might sound good it's like huh so yeah it's like spell check absolutely so uh, without even knowing how to sing a proper sa re ga ma in beat um you could actually start turning out music but you see uh, music is not just technically uh, three different things there are just three different aspects in music there is a melody there is harmony 
and there is rhythm, right? And there are just 12 notes. What, what can you do with it? Uh, when you do music through hit and trial, you know, you get to f get the feel that this has not come from within. This is an application. Yeah, there's a fine line between creativity and application. You have certain skills, or somebody else is helping you develop those skills, or use those skills. And uh, in a given situation, you apply them. And creativity, uh, in actual creativity, you definitely require the skills. But the skills are at the back of your mind. From where the creation comes, actually, you don't know. And um, this quantization that I was talking about, you know, you play something wrongly and the um, uh, computer will quantize it. I was just told the latest ver version of Pro Tools actually do does it to a wave file too. So it's remarkable. You may need not be able to sing in tune because you have pitch correctors which will make you sing in tune after you've sung um, in post-production. So these are things which have come in. I'm not saying... The, the thing is that technology is... There's nothing bad with technology. I think, I, I think what goes wrong are with the musicians or the creators themselves. Um, say when color happened in in movies, when color cinema came in, that people could suddenly from black and white could. For a long time, they could not actually make good films with color because they do not, did not know how to utilize that technology. Uh, in the same way, when synthesizers came in, a whole lot of trash happened with synthesizers. I think the first people who used the synthesizer beautifully was Pink Floyd. So, how you use technology is another thing and how you can make it into an expression, a genuine expression that's coming from within. I mean, can you imagine this is happening to a person like A.R. Rahman? Can you imagine what can happen to a person who's a nobody, who's just wanting to uh, make it big in the industry? I mean, uh, we have re gone through certain contracts. Samira, you won't believe it. There are contracts which even go to say to the extent that if you change your hairstyle, you should let us know. If you want to shave off your beard or keep a beard, uh, you have to let us know and we will tell you whether we would like that to happen or not. Because we are creating these characters and we own them. So you are ours. So these, <laughs> these are... Uh, and, and I'm so surprised that you, Rahman, after so many years, because 2006 is just now. Just now. And uh, Roja came out in uh, 90, 90 or 91, Roja came out. I uh, must tell you this story. Um, I was with the Gramophone Company of India at that point of time. And um, I was doing my rounds of uh, these uh, music shops. So <coughs> I was in Palika Bazaar. And I was sitting in one of my dealer shops. Suddenly I hear this music. Beautiful music coming from, and it's in Tamil. Not being able to understand any word, but I just love the music. So I asked my dealer, what is that music? He said, I don't, I don't know. So I followed the sound and went to that shop who was there playing it, and I said, can I uh, buy this cassette? So yeah, so I bought the Tamil version. I came back to uh, the office. That very day, our vice president marketing, was sitting there. Um, he had come from Calcutta and he um, asked me, Sushmit, you're a musician. You tell me what kind of music uh, we should be um, producing. So I immediately said that I have something in my bag. I want you to listen to this. So I took that uh, out and I played it for him. He heard it for a while. Oh, this! There's some person called Rahman who has made it completely a new uh, this thing. They were giving it to us for 10,000 rupees. You know, we are into bigger things. We have not taken it. We have bought uh, Roop Ki Rani Choroka Raja for three crores. <laughs> this, what do you say to that? What do you say to that? So, I mean, whoever is hiking up their price is actually good. Three crores Roop Ki Rani Choroka Raja and you compare it with Roja? It's one of the most legendary albums of all times anywhere in the world. I mean, why do you think we produce uh, on an average one album every three years? There are three or four reasons for that. The first one which I would like to talk about is, is that we believe in quality and not quantity. 
secondly we hardly get time um, uh, to sit down and just make music because we are touring a lot of time thirdly we are very lazy people um, and uh, yeah I, I think the most important thing is that quality quality should not be affected because you want to churn out albums after albums creativity cannot come on de demand you have to have that freedom of uh, to do it well because you you know certain uh, creations might come very naturally but to be able to polish them and uh, and to be able to play them well on stage that takes a whole lot of time whole lot of time whole lot of work enjoyable work but it's work knew this gentleman my very uh, a friend's father uh, one mr mukherjee um who's now no more but one of the best collections of music of indian classical from probably uh, 50s onwards where he had recorded it on spool tape recorders in live shows which recording that nobody else would have from that to all commercial releases of indian classical western classical um uh, and uh, probably bangla music also a lot of ravindra sangeet and all these kind of things but primarily uh, indian classical and western classical um so much so i mean he he used to uh, keep his western classical uh, index in a matrix form you know these 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 compositions by these 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 is um, composers performed by the, these different uh, orchestras and different uh, uh, conductors and so on and so forth similar with indian classical these ragas being sung in these gharanas by these people and uh, like that and uh, probably he, it was his passion and i had asked him that can i take certain things home and he somehow he had a uh, uh, liking for me he did give me a, a few copies but he told me one thing please don't use it commercially okay now when when somebody has worked on so much of amazing collection and 90% of them probably nobody has any rights for it who knows that somebody is going to take it out and actually use it commercially because i have seen this uh, gentleman who passionately collected a whole lot of stuff and all he said that don't use it commercially any company in the world will, will shy away from the kind of uh, collection that he has of these two kinds of music indian classical and western classical any any company nobody has given an iota of what he has in fact uh, i remember when i was actually making the compilation for um uh, for uh, there was uh, something called the chairman's choice that was brought out by hmb you know thick uh, six cassettes in each uh, pack that they would sell of vintage music because hmb had a whole lot of vintage collection of indian classical and also western classical so they would bring out both and i would say that you know i don't remember the exact uh, uh, this thing uh, say the cello concerto of such and such composer you know he would think oh you know uh, this was played although um, uh, pablo what 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 was the cellist name there were actually three very good fr friends pablo naruda pablo picasso and pablo casal although he is one of the best cellists but probably Daphne the Fair has played it better in such and such uh, uh, rendition with such and such orchestra. And this appeared in this particular recording which came through this company in this year. You know, he would talk like that and then I would uh, uh, go through my notes, wow, this is exactly the piece that I have. That's the kind of knowledge he had.